My name is Alexa Wicklin, and I was the team leader for Osgood, Indiana. My name is Sia Crumley. I was the ATO for Team Atlanta. For me, I liked how weekly we would meet as a leader, or bi-weekly, we would meet as leaders and have meetings where they would impart skills and tasks to us and information. For me, it was conflict management, conflict resolution from a leadership perspective and learning how to speak highly of your co-leader, even if maybe they said something they didn't agree with in front of the team, but you wouldn't confront them publicly, you would do it privately. And that's something that I've been able to translate into my life, into academics with professors. If I don't agree with something, I've been able to not say it out loud and to confront that with God and different things like that. So different skills on conflict resolution for me specifically was a practical thing that I took away. Yeah, I think for me it was, yeah, meeting the bi-weekly, but learning to, as a leader, to like see everyone. Like you have to see also your leader, uh, the good things that they're doing, the amazing things that like they don't see in their self. And then also seeing that in your team like all your members. And so uh, learning that as we like with our bike week weekly and our end devs, like pouring into one another. Uh, and I think the second thing was budgeting, which is so silly, <laughs> like, but it was like, I was like, wow, like this is, this doesn't just go towards missions or like with my team, like this is like life. Like uh, I'm budgeting for seven different people right now and making sure everybody has what they need, what they need. And so I think that was like the most practical thing that I've still used to this day. For that, I think the words that come to my mind is like wholesome and freeing. Mm -hmm. uh, it was so crazy to like think about just being on a field with seven strangers that like we started as seven strangers and then we go out and we get to like witness to people that we also do not know and like spread the gospel. And it felt like really going out and proclaiming and like making disciples like of all nations, like with all the people that we got to meet. And so it was very freeing. Um, we go out on the field and it was like, Oh, we, we like know what to do. We just, it, was, it was as if like we're gearing out for battle spiritually yeah. and like going out and doing the Lord's work. And so, um, I know, yeah, it was very just wholesome. Like sometimes I'll just like step back and like I'll watch the team like playing with the children or coloring a sum or some praying for some of the kids. And it was just like, man, like this is like, this is heaven right now. Like this is what we were, we were called to do. And so it felt freeing because it's not like I had to like be on top of like everyone like making sure you're doing this or make sure you're smiling or something like I had to make sure like with anything it was just it was freeing because they all fell into their role so like beautifully like whatever they were supposed to be doing and so yeah that's good I agree for me it was very encouraging because I was able to be in an atmosphere where you're moving with people who are empowered by the spirit and people who are positioning themselves to walk with God and to walk in the gifts of the spirit and to encourage not just, like we say, like field impact in context investment, like mm -hmm. with the context as well and with the field moving with that and walking in different strengths with people. I would be walking in for me, I'm more task oriented. So I would be, okay, let's clean out this different semi truck and let's organize this. And then I would look over and I would have members praying with people as they were distributing foods and groceries. And so everybody playing to their different strengths and supporting each other in a team atmosphere on the field where everybody's geared towards being the hands and feet of Christ, that was really encouraging to me. Ooh, I have too many of those. <laughs> um, I think like the highlight is the fact that there is this Muslim mom, uh, like that was their belief, like that was her core she did like well, she was unmovable, like with being like believing and like the Muslim belief and everything. But the fact that she was so moved by just seven young adults playing with her kids and others. And she was like, I never just seen anyone so intentional to where it moved her so much to opt her kids to be part of the Bible study. And so that like that really spoke to my heart, like because like sometimes like when you're doing ministry, you're just like, Oh, like that they told us like we have to like make sure like oh we're doing this we have to do this we have to do that like at this time but from an outsider's perspective like she was like these kids are just intentional with other children you just don't see that often especially where they come from and like um a lot of these kids stories uh when majority of them being refugees 
uh, they don't see people being intentional with their children or with them themselves, uh, praying over kids, uh, singing to them, telling them Bible stories, laughing with them. And so that the fact that she was so moved to the fact that she wanted her kids to be part of something like that, uh, I think was the highlight for me. For me, it would be not like one specific story, but individual times throughout the team, especially on this trip specifically, mm -hmm. there was so much freedom in different team members that from a leadership perspective, we got to see in different debriefs and things like that. We had a member who came in and she was walking through like a season of depression and a lots of things like that. And throughout the trip, we, you could visually see a change in joy. And she even was talking with the team during a debrief, like laughing and she was crying because of how joyful she felt. And that's continued with her throughout this. And we had other members, one who felt super isolated and coming into this, she had gotten a word from God that she was going to, what was it? There was a specific person that had walked, that was walking through the same thing that she had been. And she was going to use her test for that girl specifically. And in the different, there was one of the night services where she ended up meeting that exact girl and was able to have that interaction. And she shared her testimony during the team debrief afterwards, but um, it's hers to share. But it was it like those different moments and even having times. I remember I was in the kitchen with Shar, one of the contacts, and I was able to just hear her heart because for the for Odd's Good, it's just for him ministries and their idea is just for the one. They would give everything just for the one. And we'd heard a phrase a lot as a team, but then I was sitting in the kitchen with her, being able to talk with her and she was sharing her heart more specifically on it. And for me, it, it was a beautiful moment to see from the context perspective as somebody who's on the field all the time and hearing her passion and you could hear like her voice rise and she was talking more enthusiastically about it. And even Ken, who was the other contact and being able to pray over him and over, we had a moment, we were, I think it was a worship night and our team began to go around and pray for every one of the contacts for like Ken Shar and then their three kids, Trinity Matthew and, um, Josh and we were able to go and we called Brie actually we did call Brie we called her on the phone and we prayed for her as well which is super sweet but being able to see my team move like in the spirit and people had like words of wisdom and of knowledge for Ken and for different members and even for another contact that they came to us later and were like this is what I was thinking of this thing that God was talking with me about and you've confirmed this so it was cool seeing the Holy Spirit move in different ways, not just on the field, not just because you're going out, but in the team itself. So it's good. Yeah. I, I think for me, it has really changed my perspective and how I see the Lord and other people. Um, having a mission heart at all times I think it was so amazing being part of a domestic team because it taught us how to do it every day in our lives. Like we just went to another state for a majority of us. And so going to another state was like, I don't know, it kind of just set my heart a little late. Hold on. I'm like tripping on words because like I know what I'm trying to say. Um, I think it's just, it's really given, given me a mission, sorry, mm -hmm. like a mission mindset. Mm -hmm. I going through the skills and the training has helped to like see my team just as regular people as well like not that I didn't already but it's like oh you're a leader so it's like you think I have all these things to do but it's like it's also just so it ends up being so simple like it's something that you it's a challenge of course but um it's a challenge that you need to grow and so it's really pushed me to grow and seeing people growing and loving Christ so much in deep I uh, persevering through hard times because like as a leader like you still have your like you're human so you still go through your own things as well but it's been so worth it because it's drawn me closer to the Lord through those challenges for me I'd say it was worth it because I always thought even throughout the trip I was thinking of the parable of the talents and how God has given all of us different things and it's our job to steward that well and for me leadership was a way missions leadership was a way to steward my gift of leadership mm -hmm. And the different experiences that I've had in leadership in like leading two years ago, mission trip, and then other mission trips experiences and using that to impart into the team. Cause you know, you have your team meetings, different things like that. It was a way for me to honor God by stewarding the gift that he's given me and imparting wisdom that he's bestowed to me to other people. And also I think I've been thinking a lot lately, but it's second Chronicles 16, nine about how the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro throughout the whole earth 
to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart are loyal to him. And for me, missions leadership is a way to position yourself to be used by the Holy Spirit because you're honoring God. And it's like the missions theme this year created me. You're positioning yourself in a way that says, God used me and morphed me in a way that I can lead other people and walk with your spirit um, to show you like strong to the people who are around me, to your peers, to your contacts, and to even supporting like Augustine and the different departments and, and things like that. So that's what it wasn't necessarily any specific thing that I got out of Bishop's leadership, but it was honoring God with what he's given that made it worth it to me.